Dear Nintendo, hi, it's me, Austin. I'm depressed. Let's do this. You know, I get it. A lot of what I do is, you know, fun, goofy, but it's nonsense. Who cares if Mario can realistically punch through bricks, if the Yoshi jump is impossible, if Minecraft's day-night cycle is impossible? Although that does remind me I have to issue a correction to that episode, which is not today, but will we soon do these questions as fun as they are to ask and solve actually make your experience of the game any better? Do you learn anything interesting about the world? No, we don't. Well, that ends today. Today, we're doing something that will objectively, entirely, 100% make playing The Legend of Zelda more awesome. All of them, from the very first one to Ocarina of Time to Breath of the Wild, this is a comprehensive, complete, for realsies theory about the entire Legend of Zelda franchise, and I will prove it with the power of science! And that theory? That theory is that the entire Zelda timeline, from Skyward Sword all the way up to Breath of the Wild, takes place here on our home planet Earth. And how do I intend to prove it? With stars. And this isn't some wackadoo hysterical, oh, it's just Austin being crazy again with the string connecting errant screenshots from random games together on a corkboard stuff like usual, although I'm sure we'll get to that point. No, this is legitimate, solid, and based on rock iron observations in games across the entire franchise. So enough dawdling, let's get into it. This is a theory I've had for a while floating around in my head, and it actually started with Breath of the Wild, which has no recognizable constellations in it. Well, eh, maybe kind of. We'll get there. But no, this actually starts with the moon. Look at it. Look, look at the moon. It's our moon. It's got all the little craters and stuff that ours has, shines the exact same color and everything. But Austin, you may be thinking, that's not enough. There's moons in all sorts of games, and they all look like our moon. I mean, Dark Souls has our moon for crying out loud. And, you know, you would be right. That's not nearly enough, and that on surface didn't convince me of anything. Of course, game designers are going to model a moon after, you know, the moon they've seen for their entire lives. It doesn't take a genius to figure out that this is just how game designers make something familiar familiar and understandable, it's not a hidden lore secret. But it did plant a seed in my brain, a seed that was just waiting for the perfect conditions to bloom into a flower, cracking out of my skull while I cling to a tree branch, starving to death while it sucks out my vital nutrients, making a tasty snack for a passing bird. And the water for that seed came two years ago when I was working on a video for a game that had plenty of water in it. The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. If you remember that video, I mentioned that Wind Waker has constellations in it. Real constellations. Now, in that video, I now realize I actually got something wrong. I used Ursa Minor, the little dipper, to figure out what the latitude of Hyrule is. The problem with this, and I, I honestly hate to admit this, is that it isn't Ursa Minor. I assumed it was because the little dipper is actually an incredibly important constellation when it comes to navigating oceans in the northern hemisphere because the star at the tip right here is Polaris, the North Star, which is a star that's about 300 to 400 light years away from us, directly over our northern pole, which means it almost entirely stays still and to the north, making it invaluable to finding your way in the dark. But this constellation isn't the Little Dipper, unfortunately. It is the Big Dipper. And I'll be honest, I've always, always been garbage at identifying constellations. I really don't know why. Ever since I was a little kid and we studied them in school, I was trash at it. But after staring for a long time at this darn thing, I, I, I see where I messed up. The Big Dipper and the Little Dipper are very similar in shape. They even have the same number of stars. The key to telling them apart at a glance, aside from size and location in relation to one another, is this sharper angle the handle takes here. That's exclusive to the Big Dipper. Fun fact, because we can see the Big Dipper and not the Little Dipper, we can determine that Hyrule is 100% in the southern hemisphere of the planet. But it goes further than that, because not only is the Big Dipper in Wind Waker, Orion is in the night sky, right over there. And the wiki tells me that Cassiopeia is also in the sky, although I can't seem to find it. Again, I remind you, I am terrible at finding constellations. And, and if you can find it, uh, shoot me a screenshot on Twitter. But even if it's not in the night sky, Five Star Isles is very intentionally arranged in the shape of Cassiopeia. And these constellations are not a fluke. They show up in Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time. Unlike the moon, which is likely just modeled that way because it's our only reference, this is very intentional. It's much easier to just throw up 
randomly distributed lights in the sky to fill out your nighttime look. These were put here on purpose. But okay, this alone at a glance doesn't prove anything. They're just patterns in the night sky. Who cares? I cares. Because while astrology is a completely bunk practice and star shapes have no impact on your personality whatsoever, the presence of very specific star patterns is not meaningless. And in order to understand why, you have to understand exactly what constellations are, how they're formed, and how ludicrously improbable having identical constellations on two different planets in different solar systems actually is. Let's take the Big Dipper first. The Big Dipper is composed of seven stars arranged in this pattern. In our night sky, they look pretty close together. However, this could not be any further from the truth. This star here, Mizar, is the closest one to us at 78 light years. The next closest to us is Merrick at only 79 light years away. And they're right across from one another on the constellation. So they've gotta be pretty close, right? Absolutely not. Using some very rough back of the napkin math involving my bud Pythagoras, we can determine that these two stars, the ones that are closest to us, are in actuality at least 17 and a half light years away from each other. They are four times further from one another than our closest celestial neighbor, Alpha Centauri. If you sent a ship with a newborn baby flying from Merrick to Mizar at the speed of light, ignoring relativity, it'd be ready to graduate high school by the time it arrived. You see, what we see as constellations are actually just bright, unrelated stars. They're sometimes further away from each other than they actually are from us. Their light leaves their stars, travels towards us, and hits our eyes like a, like a movie projector all at once, giving the appearance of a discernible pattern. Our viewing angle in relation to these stars is key to how they appear in the sky. And honestly, I cannot come up with a better way to show you this than this image from Encyclopedia Britannica. This is just absolutely perfect. This means that while you can see, say, Alcade, Mizar, Alioth, Magrez, Dubhe, Dubba, Merrick, Fecta, Bellatrix, Misa, Beetlejuice, Mintaka, Alnilam, Alnitak, Rigel and safe from lots of locations in our galaxy, it's only right here, right on our planet, and just as importantly, right now, that you can see them arrange themselves into the Big Dipper and Orion. Look, look here. These are the constellations right now as we see them on Earth, and this is how they look from our nearest neighbor, Alpha Centauri, which is just a mere four light years away. Totally unrecognizable. Orion gets a bit more survivability because the stars are further away from us, but they still don't survive the shift completely unchanged. This means that in order to see these constellations in game, the events of the Zelda franchise have to, have to, have to take place in the exact same location in the galaxy as our solar system, or somehow the 4,000 stars in the night sky arrange themselves just perfectly to form two constellations that are unique to our planet, which is about a 1 to 2.317 times 10 to the 4,704th power likelihood. What exactly does this mean? Well, since the last time I checked, we have not unearthed Goron fossils anywhere, and this means that Legend of Zelda has to take place in the future, which actually makes a lot of sense if you think about it. For one, in almost every single game, there's evidence of a much more technologically advanced past than the one that we play in. Each game is essentially a post-apocalypse. I mean, tell me honestly that Fee isn't a hologram AI stored on what is essentially a weaponized USB stick that you literally have to plug into a slot at the end of Skyward Sword. She's basically Cortana. She's even blue! I think. I'm colorblind. Maybe she's purple. Still, Still, Skyward Sword is the earliest game in the timeline, and it establishes that thousands of years prior to the game, there was some massive calamity that rose from beneath the earth to mess everything up, which is why everyone's living in a crappy world filled with radioactive, I mean, evil monsters. Furthermore, there's plenty of references to our real world in the Zelda series. Sure, things like Mario, Peach, Bowser, and Luigi's portraits in Ocarina are most likely just Easter eggs, but Link's Awakening has a telephone, a real deal telephone, and a reference to Madonna. Elvis is in Majora's Mask, and Skyward Sword references Titanic even. I think the most reasonable assumption is that The Legend of Zelda takes place in the distant future, when humans have split off into many different races through a long process of evolution. And the stars actually back me up on this. For one, the stars don't perfectly match our constellations if you overlap them. They've shifted slightly. This is because as time goes on, our solar system continues to orbit the galactic center, ever so slightly shifting our viewing angle in relation to the stars that make up constellations. This is happening right 
now on our planet for real. In fact, here's an article that shows what our constellations may look like in the next 50,000 years should our society make it long enough to actually see that happen. And this is also why it's nearly impossible to find constellations in Breath of the Wild. There's one that kind of looks like Orion a little bit, but overall I can't find anything. But Breath of the Wild takes place at a bare minimum 10,000 years after the events of Wind Waker, although it's likely that it's much longer than that. And Wind Waker already takes place many thousands of years after the events of the ancient battle described in Skyward Sword, meaning that our planet has already shifted a lot. There are some constellations in the Keorug Shrine to look at, and maybe these could be like Antilia, Fornax, Pictor, Taurus, with maybe Andromeda? If you squint, it's really hard to say, but it's ultimately irrelevant because by the time human history reaches this point, our comforting, homegrown constellations that we've had for our entire species culture will be all but gone. A lot of the things in Zelda that look like magic could very easily be technology, and the game actually isn't shy about suggesting that. Almost all the games incorporate a mechanical and technological aesthetic, playing right into the hands of Arthur C. Clarke's third law that any sufficiently advanced technology will be indistinguishable from magic. Imagine trying to explain a modern smartphone to someone in the 1700s. That is what we're dealing with in The Legend of Zelda. And honestly, I think that's pretty cool. Thinking of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is like Fallout Studio Ghibli Edition and Wind Waker is Waterworld but make it chibi makes the games more awesome to me. Sometime in the past, humanity developed a technology to advance evolution either through gene therapy or something else and accidentally, I don't know, made a giant monster out of technology that tried to kill everyone. And in every game, you're just scrambling through the wreckages of a more advanced society trying to piece together your place in the world and make things better for your descendants. And that, I think, is a game worth playing. Sincerely, Austin. This means while you may be able to see Alcade, Mizar, Elliot, Alioth, oh boy, Alcade, Mizar, Alioth, Alioth, Magrez, Dubhe, Dub, Dubba, 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 Dubba,